All right, who's ready to see if we can lose a phalange? Greetings, folks. This is the next adventure for us. We have a old craftsman wood chipper slash mulcher slash grinder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one of my favorite found on the road specials. What's weird is I brought it home and I choked it, ripped on the cord, and it fired right up. And then I went back out a week later and I couldn't get it to start. So let's go ahead and rip into it. Let's see if we have spark, see if we have a functioning fuel system, and uh, see if we can mutilate some wood. So, quick overview of the wood chipper to Craftsman, aka Kratzen. We have a Eager 1. This engine is eager to run. The Tecumseh looks like in the summer we run 30 weight, in the winter we do 5W30. Got the run and the stop, got the choke, and different notches for your warm up convenience. Governor, intake, I'll have to check the air filter, exhaust, we have the stick chute, don't put your hand in there, you'll lose a phalange, we have the larger chute, I don't know if you just put a bunch of leaves in there and you just turn it into a finer mulch or what, but either way this is a very dangerous machine, it's also very heavy. Does anyone else miss the days of Sears and Craftsman? I do. Maybe it's just me, but I always enjoyed Craftsman stuff. Let's get the plug out of there. It's pretty loose. There's our spark plug. Very carbony. So one thing I noticed when I fired this up when I first got it home, uh, it was very much so burning oil. I have a feeling that this beauty has had a rough life and a long life, and is probably pretty tired. Spark plug station, go. So funny story about this wood chipper. I'm driving around on my way to work, and I see it on the side of the road. And I'm like, oh man, I have to have that so I can work on it. This is before YouTube or anything like that. So I get out, I drive a car that has a hatchback, and I realize quickly after trying to stuff it in there that it's not going to fully close. I'm thinking to myself, I can't leave this. I must have this machine. I want to see if it's going to work. Can we save it? So the next thing I do is I, th I think to myself, okay, I can leave this crammed in the back. It might stick out a little bit. The door is going to stay open. But the shocks that help the door stay open, they need to go. So I found a screwdriver in my car and I ripped off one of the shocks so that the hatch would close and stay closed and bounce off the back of the, <laughs> of the wood chipper. And that's how I got it home. Desperate times call for desperate measures. All right, ground strap and electrode. Looks better. I was looking at the ground strap, how it's kind of crooked, but it's still gonna spark. Let's plug it in, see what happens. All right, got our hemostats attached to the cylinder head. Got our nice little vice grips attached to the spark plug. Don't get scared now. I'm going to turn off the lights. Now i got to find the ripcord. All right, let me know. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. We have all the spark. <laughs> this thing has so much inertia that it takes forever to wind down. Let's do the kill switch, see if spark goes away. Indeed it does. So what I'd like to do next is check compression. Now, I have learned from my generator video that I am not a smart man when it comes to checking compression. And I thank you, because I'm learning. There is definitely a compression release in this system. It may be a pin style that locks in. It may be a cam style that bumps it before TDC. I don't know, but what I do want to know is if I have any compression at all, because if I don't have any compression at all, it will never start regardless of the compression release. I have the throttle full open, I have the choke off, so that the engine can gulp as much air as possible. Okay, you ready? Big numbers are PSI, little numbers are KPA times 100. For you metric folks. <laughs> All right, 
Looks like we've topped off at, well, I can't see the number. The needle's in the way. 60. 60 PSI, that should be plenty to start this engine. So back at the Kratzen, we're gonna go ahead now. We know we have spark, we know we have compression. I think we should go ahead and fire some fuel down that plug hole and see if it'll pop. Our choice of laughing gas today is the gum out starting fluid with top end lubricant for all you people concerned about using a dry starting aid. Couple of shots. Plug on. All right, let's see what happens. I don't know if you heard it, but I heard it, and I'm gonna smell it pretty soon. One thing I did when I first found this machine was check the oil. I have not done it since. It's not leaking at all, so there's no reason that it should be, ooh, there's no reason it should be low, which it's not, but if I recall, oh no, that's pretty clean. I wonder if I changed this when I got home, I can't remember. I think one I think I did and what concerned me is the glitter. I think we're okay now. Before we let this engine suck any more air, let's take a look at the air filter. Well, that was easy. Okay, air filter check. This is cool. It's like an automotive air filter. It's dirty, but I wouldn't call it horrible. Looks like we have a pre-cleaner in there as well. Just a mesh. Does that come out? It does come out, but I'm not going to take it out because it looks just fine. Okay, well, we'll just put this back in there for now. It turns out, had I looked at it for more than two seconds, this has a rotate and lock feature, so you can just spin it in place and tighten things down. Actually, that's not what I'm going to do. I think what we're going to do next is remove the carburetor and get to work on that. I'm pretty sure at this point I can rip the fuel line off without any issue because under this unleaded gas cap, we have a fuel tank that's completely dry. And it's nicely clean as well. I see a few flakes of stuff in there, but nothing that's really horrible. Okay, let's work on that fuel line, shall we? A little pinch. A little tickle. Wow, that was actually quite easy. This part, on the other hand, I'm not too convinced will be very easy. Lion doesn't look too terribly disintegrated. It doesn't look 100% healthy. Good news is, it, well, there you go. <laughs> Good news is, it came right off. For our next feat, we're going to take off that nut and that nut. Wrench of the day, 7 sixteenths. I think first, I'm going to take our clip off of here. Okay. And I'm going to pull this fuel line through a little bit. Maybe. Yep. A little bit. Just to get it out of the way. Then we're going to take our wrench and ever so delicately take this carburetor off. They sure do give you a lot of room to take these off in service. So both of these, the bolt and the nut, are spinning together. Very nice. Check that out. Got a little locking nut here. Pretty fancy. There we go. Little guy came off. Not too bad. There we go. Okay. Oh, well, that came off pretty easy, too. No idea which hole that was in. Thank goodness for video. Okay, so here we are. Our favorite place, Carburetor Town. First, how easy did this... Oh, yep. Yeah. This will not come off too difficultly. Difficultly? I think I just made up a new word. Grab the egg carton that the missus provided for me. Well, I say we start with the bowl. Check that out. Tecumseh Products, 
made in USA. Number 30. Not sure what the 30's for, but let's dive in and see what we have here. Got lucky. 7 16ths is our size of the day. Hmm. Gasket has a notch for something that we don't have. Well, I guess we should figure out the setting for this, shouldn't we? Because I believe that feeds into an emulsion tube, which evenly distributes our fuel. So, if we mess up that mixture, we ain't gonna know what we need. Get our screwdriver and figure out our setting. One half, one, and an eighth. Yep, yeah, I'd call that one and an eighth. And what do we have here? Pretty clean, actually, but we'll give it a polish. Let's take this back out. Let's check out our bowl. Hopefully our gasket stays intact. Oh, it did. Nice. Okay. Wow, that is a clean carburetor bowl. Very nice. Man, I'll tell you what. Ether is some nasty stuff. Taking this carburetor apart, and it just does not smell good. It smells like straight up ether. My fault, I know. Let's take our pin out of here. Have a look at our float. There should be a needle attached to that float, which there is. And it fell off, that's okay. I don't hear any liquid in there or anything bouncing around. I'm not sure if that's a repair or if that's from factory. Needle. We have a metal tipped needle. We have a metal seat. I'd like to get that emulsion tube out of there, but I do not see any way to do so. I'm probably just going to go ahead and poke at it. Alright, I have my bristle. And bristle, and it goes. Nope, I missed. Let's try that again. There we go. The bristle is in. Is it coming out the other end? Yes, it is. It looks completely clean and completely fine. All right, let's have a look on the side here. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing it's a mixture screw of some sort, so we're going to check its initial setting. One half. One. And a quarter. One and a quarter. Okay. Good doesn't really look that bad. This whole carburetor doesn't look very dirty. Maybe we're tearing it apart for no reason, but what's down inside there? I don't know. Looks clean though. I say we just put it back together. Everything here looks fine. I don't see much more reason to dive in any further. Let's go ahead and polish this guy. We'll do the ATF dip. Oh yeah, there we go. And let's polish it up. Yeah, not too dirty to begin with, but now we're extra clean. And we'll do the same thing with our other needle. What the heck is this? Is this a needle or is this a jet? I don't know. Somebody tell me what it is. It was in the bottom of the uh, the bowl in this... this uh, fitting here. Here we go. Okay, we are polished. Well, we cleaned up our needles and jets and whatever else they're called. Let's get everything put back together. They say that your float level should be horizontal. If I compare it to the gasket surface, that's pretty darn close. And we'll go ahead and torque it to spec. Let's get our needle slash jet slash whatever you want to call it back in there. I'm going to have to check the video because I am 10 second Tom when it comes to memory. Oh, 
Okay, we are gently seated in both areas. We're ready to set them to their proper position. The night has passed and we are on to the next day. We've got the uh, hydrocarbon distribution center all cleaned up even though it really didn't look that bad. Let's go ahead and check our float. Basically I'm just gonna blow some air through the fuel fitting there. Uh, I think we need a fresh end on that. Well, that's dull as can be. Got my friendly purple scissors back. There we go. Air should flow like this, and when I turn it upside down, you can hear the float in there. Should shut the, the fuel off. So, here we go. Okay, can blow through it. Nothing. Good, our float works. Now yeah, we're getting ready for reassembly here, and I noticed something. We had a discussion a few videos back about positive crankcase ventilation, or PCV. We also had a discussion about older engines, how they just vented those vapors into the atmosphere. This would be an example of that. This is a PCV line that vents the crankcase vapors into the atmosphere. And as you can see, our carburetor does not even have a location in which you could plug that in. So that is an example of a small engine version road draft tube. That's your uh, super useful information of the day. All right, let's get to reassembly. I will say that air filter does a nice job because that intake port is very clean. After a little bit of video review, our throttle linkage goes in here. And we'll attach that to this first hole right there. There's a nice viewer that suggested that I get a Harbor Freight stand that has a hydraulic lift on it. And I might just have to invest in something like that, because that would be very helpful in a situation like this when I have a machine that's pretty heavy and I can't exactly lift it up onto a workbench. So thank you to that fella for the idea. So in my small engine stash, this used to be my daddy's toolbox, I bought a bunch of these fuel shutoffs, and I think I'm going to put one on. Can't do an episode without hemostats. Anyway, I think I'm going to put one in this system because the only thing relying on all the fuel not going into the crankcase is the needle and float which is probably pretty reliable. Let's make sure we don't have, nope, no shutoff. It's, it's probably reliable for the most part, but I mean, why not just put that there for some extra insurance? Got you the bird's eye view. We'll just use our sweet purple scissors. Will it cut? It will not. You need something heavier duty. Good idea to put your fittings on first. This is definitely too big for this fuel line, so we're going to do the right thing and just force it on there. Get. Well, we know it's not going to leak. Now the kicker will be remembering to turn the fuel off. <laughs> I put one of these on my lawn tractor because I was having issues with it leaking fuel past the carburetor. And half the time I don't remember to shut the fuel off. So, what's the point? That's okay. Fuel shut off. Complete. Got my compressed air hooked up. Watch your ears. I'm gonna blow the tank out really quick. If you lose your gas cap, you know what works great? A valve stem for a tire. So why cap your gas? You ever watch it uncapped, how it makes vapors and they kind of float out the end? That's the good stuff. If you lose all the good stuff, your gas turns into garbage. So by capping your gas can, you reduce the amount of light ends that you lose in your gasoline. So that's your other super awesome knowledge of the day. I'm going to leave the fuel line shut off, I'm going to put a little gas in here, and then we're going to just flush out a little bit of the... Uh, 
the fuel line. There we go. All right, fuel line on. There we go. Good, let's drip on our ignition shut off there. Well, that's pretty clean actually. All right, well, back in you go. No point in wasting it. That's probably $4.50 of fuel right there. Apologies, I didn't have you zoomed in. All right, got the fuel line back on. Got our clamp on there. I think we're ready to try to run. I'm pretty excited. Well, I think it's gonna go. Let's turn the fuel on, give it a little time to fill up the bowl. Fuel line's been on for a couple minutes now, just for kicks. I'm smelling gas. I wanna make sure we're not flooding anything. Glad we came down for a last minute inspection because that's not going to help much. At least I think that's how that's supposed to go. Hmm. I feel like this should be straight and not bent. I guess we'll find out later how it controls or how it doesn't control. Cross your fingers. Man, that thing is heavy. And I'm not left-handed. <laughs> It's definitely pulling on my hand hard. Not one bit. And this is what I ran into last time. Oh. Oh, I'm smart. We are gently seated in both areas. We're ready to set them to their proper position. I never set the jets. <laughs> so right now we are trying to pull fuel through two shutoff orifices. So this one was set to, they were both set to one and a quarter. So here we go. One half. One. And a quarter-ish. So that one's good. Let me guess. I'm not going to be able to get my screwdriver in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this must be painful for some of you to watch. One half. One. A quarter. Success. Now that we can potentially get fuel actually into the engine, let's try again. Chokey. Throttly. Pulley. Woo! 
a nice sounding rig, huh? So it did a little bit of hunting at the low speed. I gotta figure out if this little guy is low speed. I'm assuming, I, I don't really understand fully how the emulsion stuff works. Um, so I understand we have this adjustment at the bottom, probably adjusts the mixture of fuel coming up here. Is that at high speed only? I'm not too sure. So that'll be a little research for me tonight and we'll be back probably tomorrow. Well, we're back for another day. I had this running once and when I had it running, I threw a couple sticks in it and it, it didn't really cut very well. I wanna say it, it was more like, I don't know, shredding versus chipping. So, I don't know about you, but I have never seen what's behind here. So what do you say we take off the big mulching hopper there and maybe have a peek? And if it's accessible, maybe, just maybe, we can sharpen up some of those, I don't know, what are they? Blades? Chippers? Shredders? I don't know, whatever, let's get to it. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do because I don't know the exact order of operations. MD, V, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Yeah, that doesn't apply. I'm gonna take out all of these here. So what I'm hoping here is that the head of the bolts are square and that engages a square notch in the housing. Kind of like a lot of Craftsman applications I've seen. Well, let's see what happens. Well, that was easy. Let's keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these babies here. And I believe there are two more on the bottom as well. I think we need a persuasion stick. No? Okay. Lost a washer. Maybe these washers are not captive. You know what? They're not. They're <laughs> they've all just been sitting there for so many years that they are stuck to everything. Ouch. There's one. Seriously, let go, thank you. Well, I had it all thought up in my head, and then I didn't turn the camera on. Took my paint pen, marked a stud on the bottom here, marked this guy here so we know where it goes in relation to the stud, marked this ring, including the face, so that I know which side is out. All right. Cool. So, what do we have here? Spark plug wire is coming off now. I don't want to lose my phalanges, as we've talked about. Oh, okay. Let's have a look together. So that clinking noise that you were hearing are some fingers on these, uh, there you go, did you see them? On this wheel of death here. There they are. There's our fingers. This must be our mulching blade here. Or just, you know, further mutilation blade. Going in, don't get claustrophobic. So as you can see, it's got a pretty sharp edge. Well, let me do a little research and see if there's anything we can do or if maybe we should just leave it well enough alone. You know what? I don't want to leave it alone. I still want to rip it apart just because I can. Don't want to lose those sleeves. Okay, here's the insides. These are our mutilating fingers. Check out the back side here. Right about now. There you go. 
So that is our chipping piece. So we basically have little blades. They cut chunks and the chunks are ejected through basically this tunnel here. Hey, oh, look at that. We've got a pin that's trying to come out. I'm glad we took this apart. But again, put a stick down here, comes down here. Those blades go around, chop off the tips of it. And then I, if I had to guess, these little, these little fingers here just go around, sweep up the debris, and spit it out here. You know what they say curiosity did to the cat, right? Well, I think today is our day to be that cat. Ears. That looks better. I mean, in all honesty, if this doesn't come off, which it probably won't without a puller and some sort of magical fairy dust. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the back set. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in. Our torque spec today is about 15 to 19 ugga duggas on kill mode. Should be about right. So in all reality, what I've sort of discovered is that you can't really service anything on here without removing this entire monstrosity. And I'm not thinking I'm feeling like <laughs> removing that monstrosity is a good idea. You want me to try, don't you? <sighs> I should try. You think it's going to go? I don't think it's gonna go. Put some lubricant on our threads, because you know we don't like lubricant. We're gonna go not so much beast mode. We're gonna start out on, I don't know, semi-beast mode. We'll call it beastless mode. What the heck just fell off? <laughs> the nut to my freaking puller just fell off. No. All right, round two. Nope. That's why you don't squeeze your puller while you're trying to pull things off. Because you may just pull your fingers off. that pull out? Oh, no. I don't think it pulled that out. I think it's mutilating our blade. Because <laughs> when I had it under tension, there was no space between this washer and this blade. I don't know, folks. Not feeling too great about it. All right. I'm gonna try one last thing. Gently prying on the back side. Using a brass hammer on the middle. No way. No freaking way. There's no way that just worked. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. It came off. Man, I can't believe that came off. I didn't even have to hit it that hard. Okay, well let's do an ins <laughs> let's do an inspection. Oh man, that's heavy. Need all that inertia, so when you put a stick in here, it doesn't freaking just stop dead and break the key off. Speaking of key, does this even have a key? It does not. End uh, plays okay. Interesting. There is no key on this. Probably because they knew it would break if it, <laughs> if it had a key on it. I can't... I'm sorry, I'm just bewildered right now. Oh, man. Dude, do an entire video on servicing to just this freaking wheel. Maybe I will. 
maybe that's what we'll do. We might call it right now because... So you know what's funny about YouTube? This will be blades and stories, or stories and blades. Stories and mutilators, whatever. You put out like a 50-minute video, and the average viewing time is usually like 13 minutes. So <laughs> I think we're going to call it here. We're going to start next on servicing this big giant wheel of horrendousness. And then we'll put it all back together and we'll put it to the test. What do you think? Good idea? All right. I think so too. As always, thanks for watching, folks. And don't forget, I don't have a catchphrase. We'll see you soon. Uh, uh, man, we're sideways. Sparks plugs. Blah, 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 blah. Blah. So funny story about this Jenner. What? I also have my wand threaded in here. Delete that part, no one cares. Let's shed a little light on the situation. Not a flashlight, piece of shit. Well, it turns out, had I looked at it for more than a couple of seconds, I would have seen that... Has... no, oh, no, didn't see a damn thing, I just did. Ah! Oh. Well, there we go. Oh, you're not supposed to drop it. This is a, we're gonna do a new, new little short here. We'll call it Blades and Stories. Um, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Totally forgot. Come back. I remember. All right. See you soon. See you. See you soon.